You wanna play the same night, but you don't really know which comp you wanna play. Good for you, I have made 15 comps, which are extremely competitive, almost broken I would say, that you can play right now to climb very fast. Just so you know, I'm multiple challengers in TFT, and I've been trying and observing the PBE time for the last two weeks. So I'm pretty confident about these comps and I'm going to show you them how to play them. So I'm going to start with one cost reward, then the two cost reward, then the three cost, and then finally the four cost and late game comps. The first one I want to present you is Ionia reward around Irelia and Jean. Obviously you want to reward these units at level five. Once you find them, you can push your level to level six, seven, and eight to find all the Ionia units that you want. Your main tech will be Irelia obviously and Jean your main carry. Don't forget that Sejuani is an extremely valuable unit you want to add in order to have a good amount of CC but also to activate Freljord so Jin doesn't need to have Shred because Freljord will do it for you. Also a reminder that I started a newsletter which is completely free where every week I will send to your mailbox the best comps of the meta that you want to play if you want to climb fast. So just subscribe, make sure that if you do it you check your junk box that way you can find the emails and I started this week and I'm going to continue every week. On to the next comp which is Rogue Reward. This time is around Viego, Maokai and Poppy. Poppy is not mandatory to find 3 stars but Maokai and Viego are definitely important. Once you find them at level 5 you play around 4 rogues as soon as possible and then at level 7 you can add Gwen and at level 8 you can add Senna to activate the 4 shadow eye. Make sure to have your rogues the most important ones on the side, that way when they go below uh, 40 HP or something like this, 40% of HP, they will dash into the back lane and assassinate the squishy units. On another note, I really love RFC on Viego, but if you can't find RFC, you can have something like QSS or any other uh, item that can help him either deal more damage or survive longer or have more attack speed. So now let's go to the two cost reroll. We want to play around Rogue again, since we were on Rogue. Zed will be your main carry in this composition. You have Echo, Viego, Katarina, the same as usual, and then as many Slayers as possible. Again, here, you want to have all your Rogues at the front line. You want them to actually lose a lot of HP fast, so they run uh, towards the squishy units and then kill them. Zed, you want to have as many damage as possible with IE and also a bit of sustain. You, I know with Slayer you have some sustain, but this is not enough. So Hush is actually a good way to have more damage with the crit percent chance, but also sustain. And QSS, which is extremely good because it also gives critical st uh, strike chance and gives a bit of defense to that. But if you don't have the, this, you can have something like Runan, uh, Titans, they are very good. And once you have them at level six, because these are, I forgot to put it here, but these are two cost reward. You mostly want Z, and then after you want to push level 7 to have Gwen, and then level 8 to have Aatrox. Now for the 2 cost reward, let's go with Reorders. So in case you don't know, Reorders allows you to have 4 star units, only if you have enough 3 star units on your board. This is why you want to 3 star Poppy, Tristana, and Timo. Uh, Tristana is completely useless, but you just want her to activate your order and have another 3 star unit. So your Timo will have 4 star, and then after at level 8, if you manage to find Emmerdinger, you will have two units at 4 star, which uh, who will be Poppy and Timo. Since you have three Demacia, make sure you don't put more than two items on Poppy, so she will have the Radiant item from Demacia. And then after on Timo, you just want Blue Buff, Archangel, Gunblade, um, and he will do a lot, a lot of damage, and he will sustain your whole front line for a very long time. Now, if we continue with Slayers, it's kind of similar, but it's around Kled and Yordle. So the thing is, you want to reroll this time Poppy, Kled, and Kale. Kale is probably the easiest one to find. Anyway, you want to play her because she's a slayer. And you want to activate your Kled as fast as possible. Again, don't put more than two islands on Poppy. She will get the Dam Demacia buff and Kled. What's really important on him is if you want to win with this common late game, you need to have Quicksilver on Kled. And this is extremely important because if you don't, you will see that he will mostly do nothing and die because um, he'll be uh, most of the time like being CC'd. Then after Deathblade is extremely valuable on Kled because she it will be a four star unit. And because of that, he will have a lot of base AD. So having an item that gives plus 66% on this is insane. And then finally, you can have something like Titan's Resolve. Um, which is an excellent item because he will give him a bit of defense and he needs that. Once you reward your compa level 6, push level 7, push level 8, 
and try to add Atrox and Gwen because you will activate 5 Slayer and you will have a tons of damage. Now let's go on the 3 cost reroll. So the first one is Multicaster reroll. Usually you want to play with Sona as your main carry and Velcos as your support carry by holding the chalices. Uh, Sona, you obviously want only 2 items on her because she will get another item from Demacia. Also, this is why you don't want to put too many items on Jarvan. So either 0 item or 1 item on the, or 3 items. But never 2 because you might have Jarvan taking the Radiant item. Your main tank will be Shen. It's an extremely valuable unit and it fits very well because it unlocks Invoker to have even more mana for your Sona. By the way, I put Gunblade, but honestly, um, if you prefer, if you want to have more casts, you should actually go with Shojin, because anyway, Sona will have an excellent Radiant item that will help her dealing more damage. Now, let's talk about Noxus. Noxus is an extremely snowball comp, meaning that if you don't win your first fights with Noxus, don't try to play this comp. You need to snowball to activate um, some bonuses based on the amount of victor uh, victory, so 70% of this. So for this, you want to play on all your 3 costs, Katarina and Darius. You want to reroll them at level 7. You want to play with 6 Noxus at level 7. And then once you find them 3 stars, you want to add more and more useful units, such as Scion, Aatrox, very late game units, but very powerful, and level 9, Rise. So basically, if you don't have... Uh, if you're level 7, you don't have Cyan, you have Cassiopeia, and you don't have Aatrox and Rise. And then after you can push level 9 and snowball the fights like this. Alright, let's continue with the 3 costs reroll, and this time we want to talk about Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai is an excellent AD carry, it's insane how good he can be. You want to play with 4 Bruisers, then after you want to activate good synergies around him. So you have Freljord and Void. For this one, it's actually difficult to play if you don't have TF as your Legend, because Having some Ziggs help a lot. And Cyan also like the attack speed from Ziggs because he can punch very, very hard. Let's continue with the Void, but this time with Velkos as your main carry for Sorcerer, not Multicaster, but Sorcerer. You still have two Multicasters. Chain will be obviously your main tank. Soraka will be here to support Velkos and also add uh, Invoker with Shen and Targon with Tarik. This comp is very well rounded, so you simply need to reroll level 7 and then after you can push level 8 to add Cassadin or anything else actually you can add Belvet. I think it's even better than Cassadin uh, if you can find her. All right let's go on Karma reroll with 4 Invokers and 3 Ionia. Again extremely tanky frontline with Shen, Sejuani, Lissandra. I didn't put the frontline items but just put on whoever is 2 star first and then after you want to play around Karma with Blue Buff, Gunblade, Archangel and some uh, Ice Creams here to boost her even more. This comp is extremely powerful. You can try Lissandra 3, but I'm, in my opinion, she will be extremely, extremely contested, so it might never happen. So maybe you just play with your stars. If you find Lissandra 3 perfect, with a Morello, she will deal a lot of damage already. Now let's go with the four cost units. The first one I want to talk about is Aphelios. This unit is deadly if you manage to have a good team around him. And the good team around him, and you will see that very, very often, is Shen Sejuani. Usually it's with Lissandra to activate Invoker, but here it's an exception because you already have Ash and Soraka that activates Deadeye and Targon. So you have even better team that way, you have very great synergies here. The Deadeye are absolutely deadly and your team will most likely win a lot of fights. This is a fast 8 comp, so be sure that you have a strong early game and mid game to be able to push level 8 and have enough gold to find these units. If we continue with the AD carries, we find the same frontline, Shen, Sejuani, Lissandra, Cyan. This is like insane frontline for late game. You can fit so many comps with this, uh, this frontline. And then behind you want, instead of 4 dead eye, you want 4 gunners. And Zeri will have extremely powerful late game damage if you manage to have a Jace, plus Ziggs, plus Senna, who also buffed the attack speed, so she can like be extremely deadly during her ability uh, that lasts five seconds, something like this, and she can deal a lot of damage on, on a lot of people. All right, let's change a bit the front line here, and we want to play around Azir. So Azir, you have two ways of playing, either around Shurima, like seven Shurima, or nine if you can push nine, but it's it's kind of difficult to achieve this, or with four strategists. Since seven Shurima is nerfed from the PBE, I assume that the four strategists will be stronger than the seven Shurima, because you have only excellent units, such as Swain, Jarvan, Azir of course, Timo, 
that removes healing with Talia and multicasters. And then after your main carry is obviously Azir, but actually don't underestimate Nasus. He can be a great tank as well as an excellent AD carry. Worst case scenario, if you have defensive item, put them on Nasus and put the offensive AD items on Atrox. And then we have another comp, which is less popular because I think people know this comp a bit less, but extremely powerful as well, is four Challenger and four Juggernauts. So your AP carry will be Kesa, your AD carry will be Yasuo, and then after you want to play four Juggernauts. Then if you're stabilized, you can push level nine and add, for instance, two Void like Belvet and Velcos, or you can add two Juggernauts or add any kind of late game units that can strengthen your team even more. For Kesa, um, that can be confusing. You want AP items and Shoujin. Kesa is an AP caster. She is not something like the Kesa you used to see, which likes attack speed and Ginzu and Stalik. She's not like this. And finally, the last comp, which is also an AP comp, is around Lux. So here we want to play Lux with four sorcerers, some strategies, and then good frontline and invoker. So you have three Demacia. So again, Lux, only blue buff and gunblade. She will get most likely a very, very strong DPS radiant item such as Rabadon, uh, Jude Gauntlet, this kind of stuff. So she will have a lot of damage already. That's why these two items are very good as standard. Shen will be your main carry. Make sure that Javan doesn't have more items than Lux uh, or he could become the elite. I mean, that's kind of weird, but you want to make sure that Lux is your elite. And then after your side carries are either Azir or Ari. Azir will hold the static very, very well, and you can add other items on him. Those two will help each other feel, uh, melting the front line and then reaching the back line. So they, they work very well together, honestly. And that's it for the 15 comps. I didn't go too much into the details with Augments and Legends. I think for Legends, it's up to you to try and choose many uh, playstyle that you want to try. Most of the time, I would say for reward comps, something like Vladimir are insanely good because you most likely will lose a lot of health before dealing your comp with three stars. And so you get a lot of HP from Vladimir's augment. And then after you have obviously t Twisted Fate that allows you to stack the Ziggs or the Chalices for some of these comps. But most of them are pretty balanced, I think. Um, and honestly, we don't have enough games. We don't have enough knowledge about the new set to be able to tell exactly which Legion are the best. With that being said, if this comp seems too complicated for you to play because you're a beginner or you didn't play TFT for a very long time and you just came back, then I have a video made for you because I talk about five beginner comps which is extremely easy to play and will help you learn a lot about DFT while having fun and also climbing the ladder or at least win a normal game. It is appearing here and until the next video, see you at the top of the ladder.